We're gonna go. That's why I want you right here. All right, y'all. So I'm actually at work today, y'all. I don't know how long I'm gonna be on here for, and my phone is charging. But I had to come in today because I have some instruments that needs to be processed and my at the facility I'm at now the autoclaves was down yesterday and I need these instruments for some cases tomorrow so I guess I can show you real quick let me close this door just so I don't have too much show on camera all right I can turn let me see I'm gonna flip this camera down. all right so I just ran a load. I'm gonna put y'all back here real quick. I ain't gonna be able to read all the um, comments just quite yet, but I'm about to put some instruments in that autoclave real quick. So I figured I would show you guys what I'm doing. Alright, this is my biological. I do need to keep this. I hope y'all can see. Because I can't see. Maybe I'll flip us back around. Hold on. So I can see. Okay. Hey, you guys. So, I had to run a biological and a boy dick before I ran those instruments. So you can see. This is the first, that was my first load right there with the boy did. So if y'all not familiar with um, processing instruments, this is part of the process. I'm actually going to keep this little cover thing. So that's why I'm cutting it because I need to keep that. But for those who don't know, I had somebody ask me in one of my comment sections what is SPD. So SPD is a sterile processing department and surgical techs can work as an SPD tech um, as well as a surgical tech. So for me at this facility I can work as a surgical tech, a SPD tech, and a, a first assistant. So what I'm about to do now I need to put another load in. It's going to take 45 minutes for the load to run. I'm going to take, let this cool off a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, take them out and put the other load in. But we have to keep track of all of the stuff to make sure that the um, autoclave is actually meeting the parameters. And it is because this little indicator turn. Um, and what I need to do is put this biological. So this is a biological. If y'all don't know what a biological is, let me show you what happens. Hey y'all, thank y'all for the thumbs up. Let me show you what's happening right here behind us. So this this machine reads whether or not the, this is the control, it should turn positive. So this is saying that basically it wasn't sterilized, but you can already see here, and that's positive. This should be negative. So let me crack it. It come with this little tool. I should have brought my tripod, but I have really any intentions on recording today until I was like, oh, you haven't made a video in forever. And so this would be a great day to do that. So this biological goes in here and it cracks it. I'm going to shake it a little bit. And then the little thing on the top, it changed colors. I kind of messed it up just then, but it's fine. So we're going to put it right in this machine right here. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in that one. And so it'll let us, it'll start counting if we're good to go. So now we're good. It's gonna count down. I'll show y'all in a few minutes what that says. It's supposed, it should be negative because this one was processed, right? So anytime. Uh oh, hold on, y'all. Okay, so anytime you process the instruments, it's, a, it's two steps that have to be done regardless, right? So the first one is going to be a boy dick test. And that's going to be, let me show y'all what this looks like. 
the boy dick will come out and it'll look like this. So it's black, that lets us know that it has been processed. If it does not turn all the way black, solid black, or if you start seeing like streaks in here, that's no bueno, that's no good. We gotta get rid of it and do it over again. So this whole receipt is kept so we can make sure that the instruments have met the um, parameters to kill any bacteria, any spores, or anything like that. And then I'll put this, I have an envelope right here. I got an envelope right here that keeps track of each load and what was in each load. So if anything happens, we can track the instruments back to which um, autoclave, like if we end up having to go to court because somebody got an infection, then they would basically go backtrack and make sure that we was in parameters. And so that's what's going on. Hey y'all, what's up queen? Oh, you changed your name. Hey girl, hey. I know, and I wasn't even supposed to be on right now. You changed your name, Stephanie. I knew I had, see, I was like, who is this on my feet? I didn't know who it was. Girl, y'all yeah, may work today. I need to be at home. But I'm gonna do this real quick and then I'm gonna get up out of here. Where my stapler? All the way over here. So yeah, y'all, I'm just sterilizing instruments today because we got cases tomorrow. And I was I came yesterday to do it, but the autoclave was down. So they had to call somebody out to fix the autoclave. And now I'm back trying to catch up from yesterday. I should. Thank you so much, girl. Thank you so much. Oh my God. You'll be showing so much love. I definitely need to, um, I'm gonna have to do a mukbang with you. We're gonna have to do a mukbang, a virtual one. So y'all, for this place, we keep these, this part of our tracking system. So I'm just cut it out and staple it to my receipt. But this part of working, like if you're a surgical tech, like this, the, this, this cake right here, this type of job, this type of work that I'm doing right now, this is real cake. Thank you, love that. You... Yeah, I'm, this one I am so far. This one, we, this is a little bit easier. I'm at a surgery center now, y'all, and I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell y'all what ended up happening. So I took a couple of shifts with a new travel agency or a new staffing agency, I should say. When I got here. I end up working here for like a week straight. The um, what's up, BMP, BPM? The um, the tech who was here, she was gone for a week. So while she was gone, I was basically their tech SPD person, and one and one of their docs, he went, he wanted me to close like his patient. So I was doing surgical first assist, surgical tech, and SPD work. So now. Um, so, okay, so I do that for a week, right, with them. And then the facility basically was like, please come work with us, please come work here, you know, whatever. And I'm like, y'all really can't match my rate because I already asked the tech how much she was making. And she wasn't even making $30. So I was like, oh, I know y'all can't. What's up, Zaya? Um, I know y'all can't match what I'm gonna get. And so, time pass, time pass about a, a couple of days, right? And so finally, um, they came to me and was like, you know, go apply, we're gonna see what we can do. And I already had my bottom number in. So I basically offered my services for like the lowest price that I could work for that was gonna make me comfortable. And then they, they I put it on my application, they called me the next day after I filled out the application. And of course, they um they try to lowball it you know how human resources you if you put something on your resume like your desired pay if you put a number either make it higher than what you want or know that you're not going to go below whatever it is that you put on there right so when they called me they was basically like okay um they wanted to go a, like almost like four or five dollars less than what i had asked so, and she was trying to tell me, you know, like, this is what the market going for. And I was just honest. I was like, I don't care what the market going for. I ain't working for anything below this. If, you know, if you can't give me what I want, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Because I was already with the, the staffing agency. And basically, I was ready to just walk away from it. And I wasn't tripping. But as I kept, like, 
having a conversation with her, she understood that I wasn't budging. And they were, and five minutes later, she was like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and offer you the position, even though it's more than what we see going in the market, you know, right now. And I was just like, I don't know what y'all seeing, but I know what I'm getting and how much I'm worth. So if you can get somebody of my quality for less, then by all means do that. But if you are me, this is where we're at. And so, yeah, I got it. But then y'all like the the tech who was working here, she just got fired. She ended up getting fired for y'all. Let me tell you how you can lose a job. You can lose a job if you rude and you don't want to follow directions and you nasty to people. So what ended up happening is I come in, I'm in here all like happy and cheerful and all this junk, and then she's all grumpy and being nasty and yelling at people and being rude and then you end up getting fired and you got fired because they know now that they don't have to deal with you they could get somebody else in here and so they gave me the position full time fired her so now i'm basically in charge of the whole or because there's no other tech here but i um reached out to my homegirl that used to work at the facility that i quit a couple months ago she going pr rent over there so i was like i can get you in over here um if you want a PRN position. So this this place is actually really close to my house, which I like, not like super close, but it's closer than like, it's less than 20 minutes away, which in Jacksonville, if y'all don't know, everything in Jacksonville is over 20 minutes, over 30 minutes away. So now I'm like less than, less than 20 minutes away. I don't even have to get on the freeway if I don't want to. And I'm just, it's, it's, it's a little bit chill. Like, I, I had to come in today. I know it's like, yeah, you at work on a Sunday. This is because the Friday, I had cases. And, and my, I had one case. It ran a little bit late. But the instruments that we need didn't get, I didn't process them because it was already 4 o'clock. So my manager, she was, my administrator, she was like, yeah, you could come in on this weekend and do it. So I came yesterday. But they did something to our generator or whatever, and it tripped the power. And so I couldn't do nothing yesterday, and today fixed it. So that's why we're here today. But y'all, I ain't even tripping about being here because it's Kate. Like, tomorrow I got two cases. They ACDFs. Y'all, I'm not a neuro person, so I'm really learning it. But because I'm at a surgery center, the equipment and the instrumentation is bare minimum. So it's not, like, overwhelming to me. Now, when we have like rep trades come in, it's a lot of stuff, but the reps are there to help me, um, you know, use their stuff. So it's, I'm learning, but I still have like an understanding of what I'm doing. So it's not like overwhelming, overwhelming. But this is part of it. So we'll do those two cases and we'll be really done uh, for the rest of the day. So if I'm gonna leave, I can. If I want the hours, I can stay. Um, and then Tuesday, this Tuesday and Thursday we got cases, but normally we don't have cases on Tuesday and Thursday. So I'm really working like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday I'm coming, but I ain't really doing no cases. So it's not like a hard, a lot of work, y'all. I'm not working hard at all. And if y'all know me, you know I ain't working hard like that. So anyways, we got instruments in. I don't have a cooling rack here. So I do pull them out and let them cool. But you know what I'm going to do today because this autoclave is down. I'm going to take them out of this other autoclave and put them in here. So you're supposed to let your instruments cool. You don't want them to sweat because if they sweat, then they won't be sterile anymore, right? Can y'all see that? All right, let's do something like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this on because I need this door to open. Okay, let's see what happens.
really hot, but I don't need them because it kind of cooled off a little bit. Hang on, let me clear out my workspace. I'm gonna put this pan in there. And I need to write what I'm gonna put in here on, on here. So because these autoclaves are small, I can't put that much stuff in there. Um, like when they big, like this one big, and then, okay, so see when it's big like this, I can only put a few of them in there. So first thing is, what am I putting in there? This is my AC gear tray. This is a tray that I won't need tomorrow, but it has some stuff in it that I could probably use. So I'm gonna put it in there just in case um, I do end up needing it. So I'm gonna put a time stamp. This has a, let me bring it over here so y'all can see. So this right here, this sticker has the sterilizer number, the load number, the, and the date. That's what's on here. Um, but this will be the third load. So I'll put, I'll put the load, I'll put the sticker, I should say, on everything that's going in the auto place. And I'm put the same sticker on this um, envelope. I'm going to write on the envelope what instruments. I'm about to sterilize. I'm also going to put one on, it's going to be the receipt going to come out in a minute. So I'm going to put one right there just for when the receipt comes out. And then this is going to auto play. And you can't overstuff them, y'all. If you overstuff them, it won't really let the air circulate properly. So let me see. I guess I can bring y'all so y'all can see what's going on on this autoclave real quick. Well, you won't be able to see it anyways, but I'll show you this. So we running our our sterilizer on the seventh. Um, it's like a drop down over here, so I could go to different pre vet settings, but it's already on. Sorry, y'all. It's a glare on it. It's already on seven, which is what we are instructed to do. So we'll hit a temperature of 270 degrees for four minutes and then a 30 minute drying time. So I really don't need to be in here. So go home. And then because we already there, you can see it up there. I'm just going to start. Come on. Okay, start. Yes, yes to the um, number seven pre set setting or whatever. And then now it's just gonna run. I hope it don't fail because it was failing yesterday. All right, we good. So yesterday, as soon as it, let me keep my hand from out of there. Yesterday, as soon as I was doing anything, I was getting an error up there. So I'm not getting the error anymore. It's doing what it needs to do. And I'm going to just leave this little sticker right here for when I get a little more. A little more. Um, actually, I'm going to open this. A little more receipt to come out. And I'll put this same sticker that matches all of the contents that's in. Y'all, it does not want to focus. All the contents that's in the um, autoclave has the same sticker. All right. Okay, I don't have nothing to wrap right now. I probably should have went live earlier when I actually did have stuff to wrap, but I'll show you, y'all will get to see it because it'll be me and I'll just keep coming live when I have some privacy. I don't mind going live and they don't really mind me going live like, or making videos and stuff. I just can't have any patient information. I probably gonna let y'all know the location 
uh, like the name of the facility or anything that's identifying it because I don't want, you know, them to be like, oh, we're not associated with that or anything like that. But they already know who I am and how I move. So, and I said that that was the number three. I said that that was the third low, but that was actually the fourth low. So I'm going to fix that on here. And then when the other ones come out, I'll change it again. I just need to remember. So y'all probably can't see what's on the autoplay, but it said 51 minutes. So it's gonna take almost an hour to do that, right? So what I did, I went and got me something to eat the last one. I could really leave now and um, let it stay in the autoclave overnight. I could do that. I might do that, I don't know yet. Cause it's, I could just leave now, honestly. If I left now, I could still enjoy the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, actually, I didn't already started my day. Y'all, I got up and cut the grass and everything this morning. So, I got started. I just haven't finished. I still got to wash clothes. And, um, I got groceries in the car that I had ordered from Walmart. So, I need to take them home. And then, I probably will. I might take it home and come back. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't gonna make that. I ain't gonna even sit here and tell that lie because if I leave right now, I might not wanna come back. I wanna go get my nails done, wash clothes, and put up dishes. That's what I, I mean, not put up dishes, put up groceries. That's what I wanna do. So this is the tape, y'all. Y'all already know. If y'all don't know, this tape turned black. <laughs> Let me see. If you haven't been in the OR before or you don't know what, what this tape does, this tape is also this. So how do you know which one's been sterilized? That one's been sterilized. This tape has not been. And here's that thing I was showing y'all earlier, like the chart with the boy dick. So this is past, that's past, but on the front, if it passed, and then it passed, that's a pass, but if it failed and then it passed, it's still a pass on this part, but it's still a fail. They'll say so they are it's not a fail. I'm sorry, it's still a pass. But down here, if it's not um fully black and then it's not fully black here, that's a fail. So both of these you can tell is a fail. But most of the time we'll think if this fail but this didn't, then it's a fail, but it's not, it's still a pass. You just got to know what you're looking at. So, anyways, the, that's basically like it for it here. Um we do have a dirty room so this would be technically the clean room right because everything in here has been washed um and it, and we don't bring anything dirty in here at all so when i get instruments i'll show y'all i get instruments from reps or like out if we borrow something from somebody then we'll get them but they don't come straight in here because if you bring anything from the outside it doesn't matter if it was there or somewhere else it's still dirty. So this is our soil decontamination room. It's real small and bare minimum. Now what I do here is this, I hand wash the instruments that we use during the case. And I got some more stuff. I need to put some more syringes back here, but that stuff right there helps me clean in some cavity wipes and all that. I've got my gowns and my goggles and stuff like that. This dishwasher, I call it dishwasher. Oh, you can call it what you want to. It opens. It will only open on this side right now because I haven't ran a load so this morning. So it still is in the position to receive dirty instruments. I cannot open it on the other side until it has completely ran a cycle on this side. So this, once I run the cycle and I lock this, I can't open it back on this side. I can only open it on the clean side once the cycle has completed itself. But this is where all of the instruments come and get clean before they go to the other side. So if it's in the casket, I'm running everything through the washer. Um, it doesn't matter if they told me they just sterilized it away, it's going in the washer. And then it'll I'll be on the other side waiting for it to, um, to get clean from out of the dishwasher. Let me just make sure I ain't missing nothing. Okay. 
All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, I just had to reload this tape thing. And y'all, I've been using tape up. Like, we use the tape plenty because I'm sterilizing. I don't have a lot of instruments. So it's like you always got instruments that need to be washed or wrapped or something like that. So that's what that is. All right, we got a few more minutes on this um, thing, and I'll show y'all. I think um, it's three more minutes left on that, 45 more minutes on that. And I'm going to just leave them instruments. I'm going to leave them like that overnight. Like, they're going to just stay there. It's fine that it won't, it's not on. Um, I really could turn off. So now I don't even have to worry about it accidentally turning itself on or anything. I shut the power off and I just left that um, door down. So now I have a cooling a cooling rack because I don't have a cooling rack. If y'all ever worked in SPD before, then you know what I'm talking about. It's a rack that um, you can put your instruments on and let them cool after they come out of the autoclave. But we don't have that here, so I can't do that. Anyways, y'all, how much time was that? 27 minutes. I do have two more. Um, I do have two more trays. I have two more trays over here that I can run, but I'm not going to worry about them because I don't need them for tomorrow. I'm only worried about the stuff that I know I'm going to need for tomorrow. Um, and then I'll be in here an hour before the procedure starts. So really, I can still run that stuff um, in the morning when first thing when I get here. So it, even if I do need it, I'll still have it. I'm just not gonna stay here and wait on it today. It's not really necessary for me to do that um, at this moment. But yeah, y'all. So I took this full time position. I'm kind. I'm liking it honestly. So far, I am worried about being the only one here because it's a lot of work. But it's not like, it's a lot of work, but it's not like, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like, it's work that I have to do. Like, I have to come in and do supplies some days. But it's a team effort. So, let's just say I don't want to come. I don't have to. Um, my, man, my administrator can come. It's other people that's willing to come. But because I'm the one that's, you know, running the show back here, it's easier for me to come than to try to walk somebody else through it that you know she understands it but not necessarily like this ain't her thing she's just an administrator and she's a nurse too but so she know how to do all this stuff but you know that's why they got me here to do it and then i'm a high i had i already told my homegirl like i told y'all she coming um september and sometime in september to come over here and work so i'm gonna show y'all real quick the biological turn negative so we good See how it's negative that one's positive that's the control this one was not processed this one was processed so we good we're within range uh, for our biologicals and then i've already picked my cases i'll show y'all real quick i picked the cases we don't, like i told y'all we only got two cases on monday so Make sure y'all can't see nothing really letting on the walls. So this facility is brand new. Brand spanking new is new everything. It's so new that we're still working on our air condition. Um like our air condition is having was having some kind of issue. So here are my two cases. I picked these yesterday. Maybe I'll record and show y'all you know what i'm saying me opening up this stuff tomorrow if i have time i might not have time in the morning <clears throat> because I, like i said ain't nobody here to help me it ain't nobody really here to um i mean it's people here to help me but they really we all have to do like our own part so i just need to make sure that i prepare but anyways this is the or uh, maybe I can turn it around so y'all don't have to look at me. This is the OR. Um, we got LED lights, so it keeps us a little cool. The bed set up for us to do our um, posterior, uh, posterior approach for ACDL. So this is part, the patient head. 
it's another part and this kind of attaches to the other part and it holds the patient head down. It kind of gives a little um, arch so we can get to the cervical, um, her cervical column. I think Friday we did C3 to C5 or something like that. But anyways, y'all, that's pretty much it. I do got two, um, I use two male um, stands for my procedures because I have my regular instruments on one and then I got the rep instruments on another one. And then I got one back table and I have a small one, but I'm gonna go get the other big one out the other room for tomorrow. And I'll probably get a nurse that one so she can work off of that one. And so that's pretty much it. As you can see, we got the C arm in here. That's the whole case is gonna have a, we're gonna be on the floor the whole time because that's basically, we need to see what we're doing. Can't just be poking around in people's spines and stuff without um, watching watching yourself. And so that's what the C-arm does. It, it shows us x-rays live at, in the moment. So I'll end up, I'll show y'all. This for y'all who don't know nothing about being in the OR or you're not really familiar with it. If you're a tech, you already gonna know this. But because the case, has something to do with bone and putting in pins and stuff. We always got x-ray going to make sure we're in the right spot. And so here's our leg. I normally wear the red one is lighter. It belongs to another doctor, uh, to a doctor, but he not here. And so when he come here, he can wear his leg. But in the meantime, it's gonna be my leg. It's my leg <laughs> until I can get my own because y'all been in that leg the whole time. It just, you be high, it be heavy. So anyways, I'm gonna close up my supply room. Got a supply room, little basic supplies. And we got another supply room down the hall. But yeah, I like it here so far, y'all. Like everybody cool so far. Um, the only person that had a problem with, they got rid of, so. I really can't complain at this point they let me do my thing like ain't no ain't no micromanaging ain't no passive aggressive behavior ain't no like it's just chill like my manager my um, director she real laid back then we have a nurse that we gonna she's like the charge nurse but they don't bother me y'all they just be asking me like do you need something basically like trying to make sure that i got what i need because they know it's a lot going on back here. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. Those gigs are the best. Yes, they are. Is it super soul grower? Yes. So this one is a little bit sweet. I had, right, right. What's up, Quaggy? Are you still trying to say? We still trying to say, I know I need to get my life together. I did one in Sacramento for a couple of years like that was in charge of everything, everything, honey. Whatever they, whatever I say I need. And then like I told her, I was tired on Friday. When we was done, I was like over it. And um, she basically was like, yeah. I was like, I could just come in this weekend. She was like, yeah, you can come in this weekend. Like whatever you need to do. She was like, do you want me to come in? I'm like, I don't need you to come in. I can do it. And so I came in, but then y'all, I was panicking because the autoclaves wasn't working, but I didn't know they had did whatever they was doing to the building. Like, so we've been having AC problems. So they've been working on our boiler and then the generator does something. And when the generator does whatever it does and the system try to switch over, it messes with our um, stuff. Like I told y'all, it's a new, it's new. So I think they've been in business since February or something like that. Even the new autoclaves are a pain. Right, so these, I don't know how new these are, but they're small, so, I mean, it's two of them normally, but that one is down because of, the, because of whatever happened on Friday when we left. But when they came in, the other one ended up working, and now this one, it even have a thumb drive on it, y'all. Like that red dot, that's a, let me see, that red dot, that's a thumb drive, I can't point. That's a thumb drive, so they all knew and required, you know, a tech to come out and, t and deal with it. And so when I got here, I shut it off a couple of times, you know, like shut the whole power down, gave it a chance to reboot itself. It wasn't doing it. 
So I was here like three hours yesterday waiting on it to get his life together. And then I finally called my administrator and let her know like, hey, the auto play isn't working. And I hated to call her and tell her that because we've been having so many problems. Like last week, y'all, the air conditioner kept, we was out of range for the humidity. We had so much humidity on the floor one day. You could, like, I thought somebody had um, cleaned the floor with something that they wasn't supposed to clean the floor with because how slick the floor was. But it wasn't that. It was the humidity. It was so high that it had the room sweating, right? And so then we had already opened, y'all. So at that point, like I say, I'm at a surgery center, so we don't have a whole lot of extra instruments to be just opening and reprocessing. And so, like, we was, we had to reprocess everything, and then they finally was like, we just canceling the cases. So we canceled those cases, and then that was, like, on a Friday, and then we ended up canceling cases the whole next week, and then, like, two or three days out of the week after that. So almost two weeks of the humidity and AC and the... And then it was the generator it was switching over. It wasn't switching back over to the regular system, right? And when it was doing it, it was messing up the the AC. And now we know that it messes up our autoclaves. So, yeah. And y'all, I almost didn't even come yesterday. Like, I almost was going to wait until today to come do the stuff. And so something was like, no, go ahead and just go and get it done, right? So I, <laughs> I came here. And I was all like, boom, I'm going to just not decide, you know, I'm in overtime, so I ain't tripping right now because I'm, I'm in overtime. Like, who's going to be tripping about being in overtime? And nobody's here to bother me. Like, I came in, um, I got the first load, and the boy did ran. Then I went and grabbed me something to eat, um, and then I came back. And so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm probably going to stay and let this one finish because it's only another 30 minutes or so on it, but... Ain't nobody bothering me. I'm going to go home and finish doing whatever I need to do for the week. And like I said, tomorrow, even though we got two cases, we'll probably be done by 12. I'm hoping. And it's going to be up to me if I want to stay or not. If I feel like I'm gone, then I'm gone. And my manager is like, I got cases on Tuesday. So if I do leave, either I'm going to have to come, either I have to make sure that I have all the cases ready or I need to make sure that I come in early enough on Tuesday. But I think I'm gonna just go ahead and do everything tomorrow so I can come in later on Tuesday. So I think we can get here, like y'all be getting here like eight o'clock. Oh, um, maybe we'll do like an eight o'clock start. So like I might be here like seven, which is fine by me. Um, tomorrow we gotta be here at, hold on, yeah, my phone finna go dead. Okay. Tomorrow we got to be here really early, so I think we got a seven o'clock start tomorrow, which is not I'm not a fan of that at all, but whatever. He coming here first and then he going to another facility. I would have preferred him to come here after that, but well, I say that, but then he probably wouldn't have got here to twelve and if we got two, that means we probably wouldn't be leaving until like four or five. So it's probably better for us to go ahead and just come in early and leave. You know, early. But this week, like I said, we got I'm working Tuesday and Thursday, but normally I don't work Tuesdays and Thursdays. We just making up days from where we had to cancel the docks from the air condition being messed up. So we just moved them to another day, which is this week. So we working four days this week, but we don't really work like that. And then we do pain. So it's a pain. We do pain here, like pain um, cases. And they don't even use the tech for the pain cases. So it's not like... Even when I got pain, like on a Wednesday, if it's our pain day, I might scrub in on one or two cases because sometimes he do like a pain pump and that would require me scrubbing in. But for the regular like injections or RFAs and all that stuff, this facility don't use a tech for that. So I'm cool with just making sure the room is stocked and got everything that they need. And then um, I'm probably going to leave. Maybe I'll leave at 3 i just trying to make sure I um, don't leave too early because then when I get paid, I'm going to be disappointed at my pay because I ain't staying on the clock long enough. But it's up to me. Like, they cool with whatever I want to do. So if I want to ride the clock and, you know, it's not even riding it because I can find stuff to do. Like, I got a ton of um, instruments that need to be processed. Like, I went through this room and em emptied out all of the cabinets and all of the drawers and stuff. 
and put all of the instruments in one area so I could see what I had or have. And then I can go through them and like peel pack a whole bunch of stuff. Like I got a ton of stuff that I could just make up to do, but I mean, you know, it just depends. I might leave that for a week that we don't have as many cases because this week we working a little bit. But other than that, y'all, I really ain't have too much. I should I should have went live earlier when I was rapping stuff, but I wasn't even thinking about it. But y'all don't worry about it. We'll get it. Y'all get a chance to talk to me while I'm rapping the instruments, or um, maybe not sterilizing them. I don't know. I'm gonna have to bring my tripod because um, I don't be wanting my phone in there because it's kind of, to me it's just gross. Y'all just be grossed out about being in the OR because it's blood. It be blood. People be having gloves on and they don't be like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like everything is nasty because we touch so much stuff. We be in one room doing something and then if some people don't take their gloves off. You know what I'm saying? And you just touching doors and ugh. so I really don't like my phone being out. But I'll bring my tripod and I'll sit it up set it up in there maybe so y'all me doing it or maybe me setting up the room or something. But yeah, I ain't made no videos because I've been tired, y'all. I've been so tired of just like working and I was working y'all I was I was working here and I was doing Instacart because I had rent so I I was used to working as an agency or picking up shifts right so when I decided I was going to take this full time position I messed up my like weekly cash flow so I couldn't pick up shifts I hope it's not too loud cuz the auto play is gone but I pick, I was picking up shifts and I, um, I was here so long that I couldn't go nowhere else and pick up a shift. So I would go home and do Instacart for a couple of hours just to keep like cash flow coming in for these next three weeks. Uh, well, for the three week period that it was going to take for me to get paid again instead of me going into my savings, y'all. So I was working like every day and on the weekends. Because if y'all know, if y'all know what Instacart is, when you go grocery shopping for other people. So I used to do Instacart like during the holidays. So I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna go do some deliveries. I can get paid today. You know, I can go make like a quick 50 or $60 doing like one or two deliveries and I'm good for the day. But yeah, I was tired. And then I had hair clients. So I was working, I was doing Instacart and I was doing hair just to make sure that like my cash flow stayed current while I was waiting to get paid from here. And so now that I done got paid from here, I don't have to worry about doing all that other stuff because now I can budget the money. But if you go from doing gig work, why no more travel? Right now I can't go traveling because my son in high school, my so my son just started high school, y'all. And I'm gonna go traveling. My plan is to probably, I might have to wait until the summertime so when he go to his dad's house or he is not in school and I can't either leave him in here with my mom. So it was easier for me when my son was homeschooled because he could just go somewhere, he could just, you know, he can either go with me or he can go to his dad's house. But now that he wanted to have the high school experience, which he is enjoying, y'all, oh my God. And so I'm, I'm happy that he's enjoying it. But, you know, it's the parenting for me, I guess. <laughs> But it's still cool because like I get to make sure he goes to the bus stop. Like I don't have to be here at a certain until like most days I don't have to be here till seven. So he gotta get up at like five thirty. He catch the bus at like six thirty. He gotta catch two buses. So I kinda wait for him to get to the second to the first school and then I know I can go to work. Cause then if he missed the bus at the second school, I still gotta go get him and take him to the school. So I just make sure he all the way home or all the way to school before I go to work and then I get off of work normally when he headed home on a bus. So this job really is probably like the best setup for me right now, but we going traveling as soon. And I might be able to, if I could pick up, because what I was trying to do was um, pick up a travel assignment or a contract assignment here, um, they had reached out to me and it was a 3 to 11 shift. Or was it 11 to 7? It might have been 11 to 7 or a 3 to 11 shift. So I was going to try to do that. I was going to try to do both, y'all, honestly, like for a little while. Because I really want to, like, I really want to stack some more cash. Because I haven't been traveling. So I was like, I ain't spent all the money, but the money ain't like sitting there like it was because I quit my job. 
my I quit the other job and then I went and did these shifts, which was cool. Like to get the shift work is very cool. So if you if you don't need a full time income or whatever, then keep doing the shift work. But I needed that stability a little bit more um, because it was it was just too you know sporadic for me. But I still wouldn't have took a full time job if it were in like lined up with my lifestyle this is just this was too easy for me to not you know do and then like i did one of the cases and the doc was so nice to me he was just like can you please come work here which i couldn't understand why because i was like y'all gotta say it like you know she she i'm sure she not you know not that bad but when i realized like when i got to meet her and got to see what was going on i see why like you know she was okay but she was rude and very like territorial and you know just not a pleasant a pleasant person to be with so if you want them people where you got a nasty attitude fix your attitude because you them people would get rid of you like as soon as somebody else better come along that even if that person doesn't do your job as good as you if they're more pleasant to be around they're gonna want to be around those other people like you can teach somebody some of this stuff but you can't teach people how to be nice and rude and not rude like and then she was older and i'm not saying that like i'm 40 y'all she's like she was older and wasn't really um like you know following in the damn directions the job is paid it's personalities you have to learn to do right and these doctors like they go back and let the administrator know, you know, okay, you know, is this person easy to work with or not? But if you, in this, this facility bring in agency people. So if you sit around here with a nasty attitude, being rude and just being nasty and yelling at people. Y'all, she yelled at me before I knew it. Like, I was in this bitch like, who the fuck is you talking to? Like, you know, like, I ain't, I don't know who you thought or what you thought, but I ain't her. I can tell you that right now they're yelling and, and talking to me crazy sideways like you like I don't know and so that happened like I had not met her I had not known her for like the last week of July that's when I came here so it's been about a month now but yeah I had to tell her twice that I don't like how you're talking to me like you can talk to me better than that so if I told her that in the, in the less in less than a month and they telling me like this is a problem like they had already been dealing with this and i'm like why are y'all dealing with that like you know what i'm saying so they wasn't getting any quality um text like when i guess through the job board that they was using through indeed however it's set up the people that she was getting wasn't good so y'all yeah, do not know who that is i'll get to them in a minute but yeah so anyways how much time like i got 25 minutes left y'all and i'm gonna be out of here for the rest of the day what y'all doing y'all cooking today i'm about to go I, I said i was gonna cook so i think i'm gonna go home and do that but i'm about to wrap this up let this phone charge i appreciate y'all popping in and hanging out with me a little bit if y'all have any questions just leave them in the comment section i'm gonna get to them i just haven't gotten to anything y'all at all and if you emailing me I'll probably be able to get, I have access to my website. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. So, transplanting day. Uh, transplanting, what you plant? Plants? Transplanting plants? Oh my God, don't get me excited about no plants. I got up this morning. I got up at 7 o'clock at cannabis. Oh, shoot. I need to come where you at. I got, well, I ain't planting no cannabis, but I got up and was in my yard this morning. I cut my grass, y'all. I was outside pulling weeds and everything. So I done already had a long day. But I wish I could be transplanting some cannabis. <laughs> that'd be something. To, that'd be something to grow. Not here in Jacksonville. I don't think you can even grow it here, even if you get a card. I know in Cali you can grow it. Still worry, trust me. <laughs> but yeah. So, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to see who this is texting me, y'all. Because if I answer it, it might shut y'all down. But I'll catch y'all on the next one. I definitely will pop back in here um, one of these days this week. Because I have some downtime. So, when I got downtime, I'll definitely pop in and see what y'all got going on. If y'all got any questions. Um, Yeah. So, I'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye, guys. Enjoy your Sunday.